what's good guys back at it again guys we got the sugar show we got the sugar show hey this is the last minute predictions guys i had to do it because this chair is a little bigger so i had to do it from there last minute predictions guys so without further ado we're going to get into it guys we're going to be talking about each and every single fight how they looked on the scales every fighter made weight so thank thankfully every fighter made weight <clears throat> have a little bit of mariachi i just want to show the show you know because we're going to see a lot of shows like this tomorrow. It's going to be great. It's going to be phenomenal. It's going to be amazing. I can't wait for the sphere. I can't wait for what the future has to hold for all of us, guys. New champions tomorrow or do both of them defend their belts? This will be amazing. It's going to be great. And let's get it. So without further ado, let's get into the first fight, 1433. I'm going to have to skip, mute, in order to avoid all types of copyright, guys. 1433. All right. Raul Rosas Jr. <clears throat> when this fight first opened up, guys, you could find Raul Rosas Jr. at a minus 670, maybe two weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago from now. Right now, he is a minus 1,100. And Arichi Lang is... A plus 700 now that we speak. Roll by KO or sub is juice to the grills as well, guys. It's a minus 330. I think that's insane. Right now, if you're looking at it, it's probably a minus 400. When we look at them both face off, guys, Roll versus Jr. is a shorter fighter. But it doesn't matter when he takes this fight down to the ground. Arichi Lang is going to need to keep this fight on the feet. And he's going to need to keep his distance and his back off the fence. With all that being said, guys... I am going to go Raul Rosas Jr. And I think the over and under 1.5 are good props. Over 1.5 minus 104. Under 1.5 is a minus 122. Me personally, I think the under might hit at a minus 122. But if you want to sprinkle, maybe he gets a second round KO. We could do the over 1.5. Very good odds, guys. I'm going to go the over 1.5 at a minus 104. I think maybe he can get this finish inside the second round. If not, the under 1.5 hits. Pick your poison, guys. I'm going to take the over, and I'm going to take Raul Rosas Jr. by KO or submission. Preferably, I want to go submission in the second round. But if you want to take the minus 330 as a parlay piece, you can. And also, with that being said, if you think Raul Rosas Jr. wins by submission, method of victory, you can go Raul Rosas Jr. by submission. Minus 160. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. It's just juice to the grills. A lot of people expect it, and the bookies expect it as well. So, give me Raul Russell Jr. to finish this fight inside the distance. Let's go. If not the first round, second round, let's go to the next fight. Let's get it. Here we have Edgar Chavez versus Joshua Van. Edgar Chavez made weight. Joshua Van both made weight. Every fighter made weight. I love to see it. I love to see it. I love to see it. When we look at them face off, oh my god, Joshua Van is pretty small for his division, guys. Very, very small for his division. Faces off against Edgar Chavez. Edgar Chavez is a very popular dog. Plus 190 for Edgar Chavez. Joshua Van's a minus 240. He opened up at a minus 220 earlier in the week when this fight first got announced as a short notice replacement. Joshua Van's taking this fight on very short notice. He's taking this fight against Edgar Chavez. The over 2.5 is minus 205. Not bad. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Over 2.5 is very likely unless Charles gets a second round submission or early third round or first round. Joshua Van by KO on points is minus 190. I think it's one of the best props, guys, because Joshua Van's not known for us being a submission artist. And if he's going to win this fight, guys, it's by KO or submission. So at a minus 190, it's not bad, but it is juice to the grills. Charles by submission is a plus 900. Charles by sub or on points is a plus 230. Van opened at a minus 220, and now he's a minus 240. So this was a super late weigh-in ceremonial. With all that being said, guys, I'm going to go Joshua Van to win this fight by 29-28 unanimous decision. It's going to be a good fight. When we look at them face off, Edgar Chavez looks like he's the bigger fighter. He looks like Mexico is going to be on his side. Most definitely has the hometown advantage. Everything's on his side. Has almost every single advantage. If he takes this fight to the ground, Joshua Van's going to be in for a rude awakening. So... I'm taking a very big risk here at playing Joshua Van to win this fight by decision or KO at a minus 190 because it doesn't fit. You know, he is taking this fight on short notice. There's a lot of attributes that go against him and physically. Mentally and physically, we don't know where he's at. 
But with all that being said, I'm going Joshua Van to win this fight by 29-28. Unanimous decision after a hard-fought victory. And he loses the first round, in my opinion. Let's go. Edgar Charles is a giga chad, bro. Look at the way he looks at him. Joshua Van looked away first. Maybe you could say he lost that face-off because he was the first one to look away. Edgar Charles stares him down. Has that look on him, guys, that he is ready to kill. So let's go. Let's go, Joshua Van, guys, to win this fight by unanimous decision and have an upset. Because I know a lot of Mexicans are going to be rooting for Edgar Charas, but it's not really an upset if he's the favorite. So let's go to the next fight. 16-21. Yasmin Yugari versus Ketlin Souza. Yasmin is a minus 550. Her opponent, Ketlin Souza, is a plus 390, bro. That is insane, bro. Bro, bro, bro. That is insane. The fact that she is a minus 550, but it's because of her opponent, Ketlin Souza, being a plus 390. Over 2.5 is a minus 300. I think that's the play. Fight goes the distance, yes, at a minus 250. You can reduct your winnings by 50 if you want to say that this fight goes the distance. Although, if we do have like a late round finish, the over 2.5 hits and fight doesn't go the distance, doesn't hit. Fight goes the distance, doesn't hit. When we look at them face off, guys, Ketlin Souza is the much smaller fighter. It looks like Yasmin's going to have the reach advantage and the height advantage, obviously. But I did not think she was going to be this much taller than her opponent, Ketlin Souza. She has a good, good height advantage over her. So I think her reach advantage is going to be very good as well. Fight goes the distance at a minus 250 is what I'll be taking. Yasmin by KO or points at a minus 410, guys. I will take that. I think Yasmin is going to win this fight by decision. So if you want to look for Yasmin method of victory just to win by decision, I think it's the most likely outcome, but she can get a finish inside the distance. So to play it safe, I'm going to take the minus 410 Yasmin by KO on points. But if you really want to get fancy, guys, I know you guys love to get fancy. We can do Yasmin method of victory. We go to method of victory and we go Yasmin by points is a minus 150. So it's not bad, guys. It reduces the odds and it turns a 550 into a minus 150. Just be careful because she can definitely finish a girl like Ketlin Souza. But I think Ketlin Souza is tough and she's going to fight hard fought 15 minutes. And Mexico is going to be excited for this fight. So let's go Yasmin to win this fight by KO or on points. Preferably method of victory just by decision at a minus 150. Over 2.5 as well. And fight goes the distance. Yes, at a minus 250. So let's go. 1714. Excuse me, guys. I just ate. I was eating while watching this, guys. I was eating and I was excited. I saw this guy and I was like, yo. <laughs> Excuse me, guys. I saw this and I was excited, bro. I got my Sugar Sean shirt. I got my Sugar Sean shirt. I'm excited, bro. I'm excited. Manuel Torres got that mask, bro. Like he's ready to fight like a killer. He got that cane mask, man. This guy is ready to kill, bro. He is ready to kill everybody in his path. Not only is he ready to kill anybody in his path, he's ready to get a first or second round finish on a guy like Ignacio Bahamondes. Ignacio Bahamondes is ready to go right into that war. I'm excited. My most anticipated fight on the prelim is this fight. Not only is it my most anticipated fight, but I think this fight has a very good chance at being one of getting a bonus. I think this fight might not be fight of the night, but this fight will be one of the most exciting fights on the prelim card. If it's not, then I will be very surprised, guys. Ignacio Bahamondes, plus 110. Manuel Torres is a minus 134. Fight doesn't go the distance. is a minus 400. The bookies are already on it, guys. They expect this fight to not go the distance. Over 1.5 is a minus 116. Under 1.5 is a minus 110. Pick your poison, guys. We love the over and unders. I'm going to be taking the over 1.5. Preferably, if Manuel Torres is going to get the finish, he might get it in the first or second round. He's more likely to finish his opponent than Ignacio. Ignacio is more likely. He has the finishing upside as well. They're both finishers. Striker versus striker. Phenomenal matchup. Great matchmaking for UFC Noche. But with all that being said, guys, I think the over 1.5 at a minus 116 hits. If you don't, you could take the under. Me personally, I'm going to take the over 1.5 at a minus 116. Torres by KO or submission is a plus 110. If you want to go Torres and you think he's definitely going to finish, you just don't know how, you could go KO or sub at a plus 110. Torres by KO or decision, plus 135. Ignacio by KO or decision is a plus 130. Ignacio by KO or submission 
is a plus 170. I do not think that's likely. I think if one is likely to hit, it's Ignacio by KO or decision at a plus 130. If you think this fight doesn't go the distance, just take this fight doesn't go the distance at a minus 400. I'm going to take the over 1.5 at a minus 116, and I'm, I'm going to take Ignacio Bahamondes to win this fight by KO or submission. I think if this fight touches the third round, it's going to be hell, and Ignacio Bahamondes is going to be the longer, rangier fighter, striking from the outside and putting on a master clinic. Igna uh, Manuel Torres has not faced nearly the amount of elite competition that Ignacio has faced. He's faced guys like Ludovic Klein and a lot of different opponents, but that does not matter. When you're a guy like Manuel Torres and you can just finish anybody in front of you. So if Ignacio doesn't get finished, I expect him to win a brutal, hard-fought, 15-minute, 29-28 unanimous decision war. Absolute war on Manuel Torres versus Ignacio Bahamondes. Bahamondes trains with Bilal. Price is looking juicy for Bahamondes. He opened at a minus 145 favorite. He's currently a plus 105 now. Majority of the money has been on Manuel Torres. Minus 125 on Torres. Big move from the bookies a lot of people are going to be on manuel torres guys he's going to be a bigger favor by tomorrow but be careful guys this fight screams 1-800 gambler so be careful i'm going to take ignacio bahamondes by unanimous decision 29 28 preferably after a hard fought war hard fought let's go ignacio vamos he's not the hometown crowd but let's go 1835 Irene Aldana versus Norma Dumont, guys. When I look at this fight, Norma Dumont showed improvement in her fight IQ, guys. We got to get the best views. We got to get the best angles of this fight. Irene Aldana versus Norma Dumont, guys. Let's get it. Let's talk about what this fight has to offer. Norma Dumont showed improvement in fight IQ. Showed that she's gotten better from her fights, though. She is a decision merchant. Honestly, this price tag for Dumont opened up at a minus 125, but now it is a pick -em. Minus 115 for Irene Aldana. Norma Dumont is a minus 105. Dumont by decision is a plus 140. Majority of money is on Dumont. Irene by KO or decision is a minus 115. Aldana by points is a plus 140. Slight favorite. Boxing versus grappler. I think this fight goes the distance, guys. I think this fight definitely goes the distance, and that's one thing that I really wanted to look at, guys. Norma Dumont versus Irene Aldana. Currently speaking, it's a minus 116 for Irene and minus 102 for Norma Dumont. Total rounds over 2.5 is a minus 550. So that's already juice to the grills. Will this fight go the distance? Yes, at a minus 410. Honestly, give me method of victory. Irene Aldana by points or Norma Dumont by points at a plus 140. I'm going to be taking Norma Dumont to win this fight by points at a plus 140. I think it's the best prop for this fight. She gets in her face, gets all up in her face. She might... <sighs> She might get pieced up. She might get completely pieced up. Irene Aldana is going to have the Mexican advantage. She's going to have the hometown crowd. She's going to have the better boxing. If she can keep this fight on the feet, Norma Dumont's going to be in for a rude, rude awakening. She's going to have trouble taking her down. If she can't take her down, she's going to gas. So Norma Dumont's going to lose this fight if she can't get it down to the ground. I'm going to be taking Norma Dumont, though. I think she's going to be the stronger fighter on the ground. She has great control time, and she should be able to control a girl like... Uh, Irene Aldana, she got controlled by Holly Holm, but that was long, long ago, and that was a five-round fight. Irene Aldana is a great pick. Whoever you want to pick, guys, pick your poison. Honestly, money line is the best route for both of them. I'm going to take Norma Dumont to win this fight by decision, preferably at a plus 140. Let's go. Crazy face-off. I love these face-offs. I don't really know what you guys think, guys. Norma Dumont wanted to shake her hand. She really didn't end up shaking her hand at all, which kind of sucks, guys. We all have been there. 1951. Let's get to the next fight. All right. I thought I was going to get hit with an ad. Oh, my God. Okay, Ronaldo Rodriguez versus Ode Osborne. Ronaldo Rodriguez, if you guys liked them, guys, what did you guys think of the press conference yesterday? Was it exciting? Was it entertaining? Was it something that everybody wanted to see? I don't know. Maybe it wasn't that exciting. Ode Osborne is a plus 128. Ronaldo Rodriguez is a minus 158. Bigger favorite since the presser. Big fan of Ronaldo Rodriguez after yesterday. Open at a minus 170 on Rodriguez. Early on, we getting bets 
on O.D. Osborne. We're getting a bunch of bets on O.D. Osborne. Respectable bettors have bet on O.D. Osborne for a large amount. We got as low as minus 125 for Ronaldo Rodriguez. I don't think UFC is trying to push O.D. Osborne. Minus 150 is the parlay money will come in on Rodriguez. A bunch of parlay money is going to come in on Rodriguez. Under 2.5 is a minus 128. Rodriguez by sub or points is a plus 120. O.D. by points is a plus 370. When I look at this fight, guys, it is going to scream maybe, maybe we have another Muhammad Makayev and Manal Cap situation. I don't think so, though. I don't think so. I know a lot of people were saying that, that these guys are going to be all talk, and when they fight in the cage, it's not going to be fun. I think it will be insane. I think it will be hectic, and I think Ronaldo Rodriguez is going to run out the gate exactly how he feels right now. He's getting emotional. Maybe that could be better, or maybe that could be for the worse. But with all that being said, guys, Ode Osborne is a taller fighter, ranger fighter, more UFC experience. We saw with Dennis Bondar, uh, Ronaldo Rodriguez was losing, and he didn't look good at the start of that fight. Honestly, with all that being said, guys, I think this fight goes under 2.5 no matter what. I don't think this fight goes a distance. I'll be surprised if it does. Rodriguez by sub or points is a plus 120. I think it's the best path. I don't see Ronaldo Rodriguez KOing Ode Osborne. And uh, if he's not able to take this fight to the ground, guys, Ode Osborne to win by decision at a plus 370 is really good for a sprinkle. If you really believe in Ode Osborne, if you like his mentality, he said that he beat the guy that Ronaldo Rodriguez lost to in 30 seconds. So with all that being said, I'm going Ronaldo Rodriguez by second round submission. It's going to be a great fight, guys. There could be a lot more finishes than we expect. So be careful for tomorrow. I can't wait for this one. What a way to start off the main card. I know I was talking bad. Ode Osborne on the main card. What a way to start off the main card. Let's go. Let's go. Give me Ronaldo Rodriguez by second round submission. And give me the under 2.5 at a minus 128. Let's go. This is my most anticipated fight on the main card. This is my most anticipated fight on the entire main card. My most anticipated fight. I'm more excited about this fight than I am about Diego Lopez versus Brian Ortega. Many people won't agree on that. But with all that being said, guys, Daniel Zell Huber minus 225 versus Esteban Rebovics at a plus 184. There's rumors going around that Esteban Rebovics hurt his hand. We know guys like Left Hand to God have hurt their hand and they've been able to win and even KO the guy with the same exact hand. So don't take that into consideration. If you hear chirping, guys, don't take that into consideration. Don't pay attention to that. Go with what you feel. Go with your gut and go with you, who you think is more of the better striker and the best man to win this fight. Daniel Zell Huber looks like he's ready. He trains with Ronaldo Rodriguez, has a good team, guys. Mexico looks good for tomorrow, but we know time and time again, like Canada, they all lost. This could happen. It could be a possibility where there's a huge upset and a guy like Rebovix KOs Daniel Zell Huber. With all that being said, guys, Daniel Zell Huber was a bigger favorite on Monday. Esteban, a great underdog. Minus 175 opened up for Zell Huber. Shot up as high as a minus 280, then lowered. Respectable bets on, are on Zell Huber. This isn't a give me five for Zell Huber. Line gets thrown into a lot of parlays. A lot of bets on the over. I like the over 2.5 at a minus 200. Rebovics could end this fight in a finish. I think Zell Huber can wrestle. I think Zell Huber is going to wrestle, guys. I think he's going to do some things. I think he has a trick up his sleeve, guys. And I really liked how he looked against Prado, guys. I looked, I liked how he looked against Prado. He looked really good, guys. Prado's head movement, he was able to twist his fist at the end of his combinations in order to land. And he was able to land off of Prado's head movement, guys. So head movement, he's very accurate at hitting. Sometimes Zell Hubert throws a lot, and uh, he's not that accurate. Maybe Esteban's more of the accurate fighter, guys. Maybe Esteban is that guy who's going to get you across that black line and finish you with a head kick KO like he did Terrence McKenney. The finishing upside is on Esteban Rebovics, but with all that being said, guys, the longer reach, the height advantage, the youth, the techni the technician is on Daniel Zell Huber's side. With all that being said, guys, I'm going to go Daniel Zell Huber by unanimous decision. Over 2.5 is a minus 200, but if you really want to go and get fancy with these points, guys, if you really want to get fancy with these points, I go to Daniel Zell Huber, I go to Method of Victory, and I go... Daniel Zell Huber by points is a plus 130. Honestly, I like it. He's a minus 215, so you get some juice out of that. But if you want to play it safe, guys, go Daniel Zell Huber by KO or on points. Daniel Zell Huber by KO or on points is a minus 180. It has shrunk, guys. It was a minus 190 earlier today. Now it's a minus 180. 
a lot of people have this as the best underdog. The best underdogs are Rebovix and... Oh, I can't remember, guys. The best underdogs are Rebovix and Edgar Charis. Edgar Charis. Rebovix and Edgar Charis. So don't tail think with your head, guys. I'm going to go Daniel Zell Huber to win this fight by 29-28. Unanimous decision after he tees off on a guy like Rebovix and maybe mixes in a little bit of takedowns. Respect. Respect. All right, next fight, guys. Over 2.5 is not bad either if you're feeling a little iffy about this fight. At a minus uh, 200. Although it is juice to the grills. 22-37. Brian Ortega. Brian T-City Ortega. Rescheduled bout against Diego Lopez. Who was a minus 180 for the first time guys. This fight was booked. Diego Lopez was a plus 105 underdog. Fight falls apart. Rebook a couple fights later. And he's sitting up almost at a minus 200. Diego Lopez all the time. I don't like fading Ortega. I'm picking Lopez. But the bigger this number gets... The more I don't want to disrespect T-City. A lot of people like Ortega. This fight probably doesn't go the distance. But I took the over 2.5 guys. If you look at FanDuel guys. Because this is what my bookie is telling me. The over 2.5 guys is rarely good. Really good number. At a minus 126. Brian Ortega has never been finished in his career. He had a doctor stoppage against Max Holloway. And he hurt his shoulder against Yair Rodriguez. But then ended up. Winning and having revenge on that win and submitting Yaya Rodriguez in the rematch. So, Brian Ortega never gets finished, guys. I don't think Diego Lopez is going to be able to finish. But if you want to go and get fancy with it, guys, you can do double chance Diego Lopez by KO or submission is a plus 165. Diego Lopez by KO or on points is a minus 120. It's a safer route. But honestly, guys, if you think that this fight ends by KO, just go, how will this fight end? And if you go by KO, it's a plus 175, guys. If this fight ends by submission, it's a plus 330. I think it's worth a sprinkle, guys. Fight ends by submission, plus 330 is insane. Fight ends by points is a minus 105. So the book is already on it. I think this fight ends by points as well. Unless there's a crazy, crazy injury or there's a crazy finish like Brian Ortega gets brutally KO'd. Brian... Uh, Diego Lopez starts off fast. Not only does he start off fast, he's finished Sadiq Yusuf in the first round. Has a lot of wins in the first round, but he has been knocked out before. So I think a KO is more likely than a submission, if anything. But I'm going to go Diego Lopez to win this fight, guys, by KO or on points at a minus 120, guys. I think it's a safer route, and it turns Diego Lopez from a minus 172 to a plus 1 to a, to turns to a, sorry, to a minus 120. Turns Diego Lopez, who's a minus 172, into a... Minus 120, guys. Diego Lopez by KO or on points is a minus 120. I think the over 2.5 at a minus 128 is not bad either. So pick your poison, guys. Let's go. Diego Lopez to win this fight. Although T-City is that underdog. One of the best underdogs, guys. Rebovix, T-City, and Edgar Chavez. Really good underdogs, guys. If you want to sprinkle Brian Ortega by submission, fight ends by submission. is plus 330. You can. But I think Diego Lopez is going to win this fight, guys. And I think it's going to be by KO or decision, guys. Let's go Diego Lopez. He may even be the first person to finish. A guy like Brian Ortega. I'm going to watch this fight for fun, but I got Diego Lopez in one of my parlays, guys. So let me know what you guys think about this fight because I do not know what's going to happen this fight. This fight's going to be lit. I think the over 2.5 hits. And I think Diego Lopez by decision is the best route. 29-28 after he loses probably the third round because Diego Lopez is known for losing the third round. So give me Diego Lopez to win this fight, guys, by decision. I know it's not a popular opinion, but let's go. Next fight, guys. Next, 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 next fight. 25-31, 25-31. Alexa Grosso versus Valentina Shevchenko. Alexa Grosso looks very good, guys. Looks in good shape. I like what she does with her hair, guys. The braids look really nice. And it shows, guys, that she's ready to fight. Not only is she ready to fight, guys, but she's ready to, she's ready to show off for Mexico, guys. UFC Noche is here. A lot of pressure, if not the most pressure, other than the main event, is on Alexa Grosso. Everybody's going to be cheering for Grosso. Grosso's a minus 130. Shevchenko's a plus 106. Grosso's slight favorite every time they move this fight out. Valentina gets older and older. I do believe we see Grosso defend her belt this Saturday. Opened in July to minus 115 on Grosso. This is the time for Grosso. Respected bets on Shevchenko. Parlay exposure on a minus 130 favorite. 
Honestly, a lot of people are going to be blindly tailing Alexa Grasso. They don't know what happened in the second fight, how Valentina Shevchenko was able to take her down almost every single round and control her for a lot of time. Other than the last fifth round where Valentina Shevchenko was actually winning that fight until she gave up her back and then got grounded. And then she got Alexa Grasso finished on top with a couple of strikes. And it was given a 10-8 round, the fifth round for Alexa Grasso. So we can say that uh, Valentina Shevchenko was on her way to winning that fight until the 10-8 round for Mexican. Uh, it was in, in Mexico. I believe it was Mexican Independence Day. So Mexico was on her side, gave her the 10-8 round. Although it was a very close fight, it was called a draw. With all that being said, guys, let's look at the odds. Grosso by KO or decision, guys. I can't imagine losing a parlay because of the co-main. Most people will need Grosso to win. I think she will have the better takedown defense or she's doomed. She better have the better takedown defense or she's doomed. If she did not get any of her takedown defense better, she's in for a rude awakening. A rude, rude awakening, guys. So with all that being said, guys, Grosso by KO or decision, guys, is a plus 140. Grosso by sub or decision, plus 100. Val by KO or points is a plus 125. Val by sub or points is a plus 135. Honestly, with all that being said, guys, I think Grosso by sub or decision out of plus 100 is my take. If you want to go Val by KO or on points is a plus 125. If you think maybe Val can get a submission, submission or on points is a plus 135. I think Grosso by sub or decision at a plus 100 is better. It's a safer route. She's the younger fighter. Val is almost 37. Although she had a very close fight and almost beat the champion. She's had way too many close fights, guys. With Talia Santos, she got submitted against Alexa Grosso. And then she had a draw. So with all that being said, it's now or never, guys. If Valentina doesn't win, guys, she... Is going to be in the back of the line, guys. But I think both of these girls probably lose to Mana Farad. Mana Farad is next for the title shot, guys. If you know, you know. But with all that being said, guys, if Alexa Grosso can win this fight by submission or decision, it should be in dominant fashion. I think this fight's going to be split decision. And I think this fight's going to be 48-47. Split Alexa Grosso, 48-47. Split Valentina Shevchenko, 48-47. Split for Alexa Grosso. I think Alexa Grosso is going to get taken down. She's going to get controlled again. And she's going to have trouble with that jab. Alexa Grosso does this thing where she goes like this. And then she goes like this. And she waits. And she gets tentative. And then she throws. But when she waits and gets tentative, Valentina adds up on the scoreboard. With all that being said, it's going to be a way closer fight than a lot of people expect it to be. And there's a reason why this fight's one of the only trilogy fights of women MMA in MMA in women MMA history. In all of UFC, there's never been a woman MMA trilogy. So respect these girls. These girls are coming to battle, and it's going to be one of the closest fights I've ever seen. One of these fighters is going to win by a hair. I think one of these fighters is going to win by a hair. This fight is going to be really close. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe one of these fighters wins definitively. I would like that. But the way they match up, guys, they match up like this fight is always going to be close. You run this fight 10 out of 10 times. It's always going to be a close fight, guys. So let me know what you guys think, guys. I'm going to take Alexa Grosso to win this fight by sub or decision at a plus 100 and the over 4.5. Honestly, I think the over 4.5 is probably one of the best answers. It's more likely, too, as well. The odds are shrinking right now as we speak. Minus 124 for O'Malley. Like, he was a minus 140. How did he get to a minus 124? That's crazy. It reminds me of DDP versus Israel Asanya, guys. The odds were shrinking, and then they got even the day of. So pay attention to the book, you guys. If you see the odds fluctuate very, very, very drastically, the boogies know something. So, the over 4.5, guys, is a minus 220. It's juice to the grills, guys. Do what you want with that information. I think the over 4.5 at a minus 220 is going to hit, and it's more safer. And you don't have to be nervous if this goes to decision, and it's a split. So, with all that being said, guys, give me Alexa Grosso to win this fight by submission or decision at a plus 100, guys. Let's go. 31-23. Marab Davasvili, guys, versus Sugar Sean O'Malley, guys. I got I to gotta drink my water for this. This is going to be lit. This is going to be lit. This is going to be lit, guys. Sugar Sean O'Malley versus Marab Davasvili, they face off. Marab has a lot of things to say, guys. His teammate Aljo got brutally KO'd against Sugar Sean O'Malley, and he wants to avenge his teammate. Sugar Sean O'Malley is a minus 134, but now, and 
it, Marab was a plus 110, but now that we see it, guys, now that we look at the odds, Marab is a plus 102, and Sean O'Malley's a minus 124, guys. Even the odds for Alexa Grosso just shrinked. Alexa Grosso is a minus 126 now, plus 108 for Shevchenko, excuse me. The odds are fluctuating overnight, guys. Pay attention. Sean O'Malley, minus 124. Marab really is a plus 102, guys. He's going to be a minus 105 by tomorrow, guys. I can definitely see that happening. When I look at this fight, guys, this is what I wrote in my notes. So, Marab opened up at a plus one. Uh, Marab opened up at a minus 160. For Marab, he was as high as a minus 150. Respectable side of Marab has a chance. Clear cut way for victory. Cardio for days. A bunch, a bunch of cardio. A bunch of O'Malley's money is. A bunch of money's on O'Malley. A bunch. Drake just bet on O'Malley. You don't know about the Drake curse. We don't know. Drake has bet on Israel Asanya versus DDP. Israel Asanya lost. Drake bet on Jared Kennedy versus Israel Asanya. He bet on uh, Israel Asanya. The Drake curse didn't hit then. But the Drake curse is real, guys. Honestly, if this fight ends inside the distance, guys, it's preferably by KO, by Sugar. If you keep an eye on the odds, on the lines, Sugar is a minus 134. He might even be an underdog by tomorrow. The way these odds are moving back and forth. He was a minus 140 in the morning. Now he's a minus 134. Now he's a minus 124. So the bookies are changing the odds a lot. Be careful, guys. If you guys see him as a dog, be careful what is going on around, guys. Because we've had a lot of weird, weird, weird stuff going on. So with all that being said, O'Malley, when he's in his flow state, he is unstoppable. His fluidity is good. He is good. Marab shot 49 takedowns on Peter Yan and got six minutes of control. Both Clint and his friend are on Marab. We will see what happens. Give me sugar by KO or decision. Double chance at a minus 130. I don't think the double chance matters now. At, a, at the time, I thought sugar was going to be a minus 150, a minus 200, uh, like he was against two, against uh, Marlon Chito Vera. But now, guys double chance like sugar by ko or decision at a minus 130 i'd rather take the sugar by ko or on points is a minus 125 now i'd rather take the money line than a minus 124 the money line is literally a minus 124 marab's a plus 102 total rounds over 4.5 is a minus 126 under 4.5 is a minus 102 i'm gonna be going over 4.5 honestly if i have to pick one i'm going the over on my six best bets i went the over I think this fight ends inside the distance, and me personally, I think it's by KO or decision by O'Malley. If you want to go O'Malley by KO, it's plus 110 for this fight to end by KO. Fight ends by points is minus 120. Honestly, I like method of victory, and I like Sugar Sean by KO. Method of victory, Sean O'Malley by KO is a plus 165. I think it's really good. Not only do I think it's good, but I think it's one of the most likely outcomes. And if you get to KO, guys, me personally, I think it's going to be a KO in the third round. I was asking DFS. I was asking a bunch of people, guys. Do you guys think it's going to be a head kick KO? He hurts him. Or it's going to be a step back off the brink counter. Guys, if he wants to be a superstar, guys, he needs to finish. He needs to finish a guy like Marab. But we know time and time again, guys, Marab's going to try to hold you against the fence. He's going to shoot. He shot 49 takedowns against Peter Yan. 49 takedowns and got six minutes of control, guys. With that being said, I think he's going to definitely, I can definitely see Marab clasping his hands Getting a big body slam and slamming Sugar on the floor. He has been slammed before like Peter Yan did. And um, with all that being said, guys, Marab just had a cut too. So we don't know if that cut's going to open up. But if Marab's able to get this fight to the ground, guys, that's not his pace. His pace is to put a relentless pressure like Kobe Covington and make you gas out. If this fight goes to the third round, fourth round, and there's no KO, guys, this fight's most likely going to go the distance. That's why I like the over 4.5 at a minus 122. Preferably right now, if we look at it, guys, the over fight to go the distance, yes, at a minus 110, no, at a minus 116. The odds are almost even. Over 4.5 is favored at a minus 126, under 4.5 is a minus 102. If you want to take it, take it, pick your poison. Me personally, I think this fight goes the distance. I like Sugar Sean by decision or third round KO. I like. Sugar, man. I like sugar, guys. Sugar by sub is 3,000 plus 3,000. Sugar by decision is plus 430.
that's not bad because we know it's likely. If you want to go, guys, and think Marab has a chance to win this fight by decision, Marab Davashvili by points is a plus 175, so it's not bad. If you think Marab maybe hurts Sugar because he gets an injury, he's known for getting injuries, Marab by KO or on points is a plus 115, guys. Marab by submission or on points is a plus 140. If you want to go just Marab by submission, let's say Marab by submission plus 1600. So that's not bad at all, guys. But with all that being said, guys, I'm going to go specifically Sugar Sean O'Malley by third round TKO. If not rounds one, two, or three, I think this fight is definitely going to make Sugar Sean O'Malley a superstar. And you know what, guys? The under 4.5 is probably going to hit, guys. But it's more on Marab's side on whether he can take all those punches and whether the referee steps in and gets an early stoppage or if he lets him fight. If he lets him fight, guys, a guy like Marab with his recovery, guys, he's not going to get finished. I don't think he's going to get finished, guys. So, me personally, I don't like playing Sugar by KO straight. I like playing just Sugar money line. Just give me Sugar money line. I think he could win this fight in multiple ways. Marab has many paths of victory to this fight, but me personally, I think Marab's best path to victory is by decision. And I think Sugar Sean's O'Malley is going to look like a star. He's going to have great, phenomenal footwork, guys. And he's going to be there to show off what he's got, guys. With all that being said, guys, let me know what you guys think. I'm going to go Sugar Sean by KO or decision. I'm going to just take Sugar Sean money line at minus 124. And I think he's going to knock out Marab tomorrow in the third round. Let's get it, guys. They talk. They exchange words. They try to shake hands. And he gives them a fist bump. So we know O'Malley steps into that mindset. He steps into that zone. And we know a guy like Marab is going to he's gonna go all out. And with all that being said, a guy like O'Malley, when he enters his flow state, guys, he's capitalizing off of your mistakes. Just waiting for a guy like Marab to make the wrong mistake and capitalize on it. Cut open Marab, make him leak everywhere, start bleeding. Marab gets a big takedown, explosive takedown, controls him for two minutes. Sugar Sean gets right back up. Tease off on him. Uppercut up. Knee up the middle. Let's get some boxing like Chris Matinho. Dribbling back and forth. Dribbling back and forth. Shoot. Masterclass on Marab. Could win this fight by decision. Could win this fight by KO. Give me minus 124. Sugar Sean O'Malley to win this fight by KO. Specifically in the third round. If I have to pick one. Let's get it guys. I hope you guys enjoyed guys. But I just wanted to show you guys this edit. That's all I wanted to show you guys, just this edit really quick, guys. I think this is one of the best edits of all time, guys, and I really like this edit. I just wanted to show you guys this edit really quick, guys. Let's get it. This is what O'Malley, want. This is what O'Malley had to say, guys. This is exactly what O'Malley had to say, and I thought it was pretty funny. Uh, let's go. Okay, here we go. Okay, here we go, guys. Sorry about that. See you guys in the next one, guys. Shout out to that amazing edit, guys. Shout out to that guy, guys. Let's get it. Let's get it. See you guys in the next one. Peace.